Hey there, and welcome back to Learn English Lab. My name is Ganesh, and this lesson is all about the difference between who and whom. This is something that uh, a lot of students find confusing. When to use who and when to use whom. Well, in this lesson, I'll show you how to use these correctly. Uh, before we begin, just remember that if you have any questions at all, just let me know in the comments section below, and I will talk to you there. Okay, so let's start. Now, who and whom are used in two places. They're used in questions, and they're used in relative clauses. Well, first we'll talk about questions, and then we will come to relative clauses. If you're not sure what that means, don't worry. I will explain it to you when we get to that part. Now, here's the rule with using who and whom. Who is used in the place of a subject, and whom is used in the place of an object. What do I mean by that? Well, take a look at this sentence. Bruce spoke to Betsy. In this sentence, we say that Bruce is the subject because Bruce does the action, which is speak. Past tense, spoke. And Betsy is the object because Betsy receives the action. Now, some people might argue, is Betsy really the object because there's a to, which is a preposition here, but you don't have to worry about that. For the purpose of this sentence, we'll say that Bruce is the subject and Betsy is the object. Take a look at these two questions over here. Uh, there's a blank there, mm, spoke to Betsy. Now here, we want to fill in this uh, blank with either who or whom, which is correct. Well, if you read the sentence, you realize that we know someone spoke to Betsy, but we don't know who that someone was. That is, we're asking about the subject. So the word for the subject is who. So who spoke to Betsy? Now in the second sentence, of course, you must be thinking we have to use whom here, right? You probably guessed that. And that is correct. But uh, before we get to that, I'm just going to write who over here. Well, now read the sentence. Who did Bruce speak to? This is actually correct in speaking. And in fact, when we speak, we don't commonly use whom. In speech, we almost always use who. So this means if you are not sure whether to use who or whom, just use who and you will be okay. All right, but uh, I'm going to take the who off. So what about if you want to uh, write something formal okay, or if you want to use a proper grammatical form? Well, in that case, you need to know how to use whom correctly. And in this question, if you read it, mm, did Bruce speak to? Here, we know that Bruce spoke to someone but we want to ask who that someone was. That is, we want to ask about the object of the sentence. Remember Betsy? So because we want to uh, ask about the object, we have to use whom over here. Before I write whom, just notice that there is a two at the end of this question. Now in English, we have a rule that we don't usually end a question with a preposition like to. These are all prepositions, to, with, by, from, for, etc. So if you have a question at the end, pardon me, a preposition at the end of the question, you have to bring that to the beginning before you write whom. So let's do that. I'm going to put a question mark there. To whom did Bruce speak? That is actually the proper grammatical form of that question. So if you're writing something formal, this is how you should write it. Okay, at this point, I'm going to give you a very simple rule that you can use in all situations to decide whether to use who or whom. And the rule is this. When you're making a question, think about the answer to that question. If the answer can be him, her, or them, then you use whom, okay? So if the answer can be him, 
her or them, you use who. So to this question, to whom did Bruce speak? We can say, Bruce spoke to him, Bruce spoke to her, Bruce spoke to them. Okay. Uh, so if there's an M in the answer, then you put an M in the question. This is uh, my M whom rule. Uh, but let's go back to this first sentence. Here, you cannot answer with him, her, or them. If someone asks who spoke to Betsy, you cannot say him spoke to Betsy. Her spoke to Betsy, them spoke to Betsy. That doesn't sound right. But here you can say he spoke to Betsy or she spoke to Betsy. So if the answer can be he, she, or they, that is there's no M in the answer, there's no M in the question. All right, with this rule in mind, uh, let's now do the next couple of questions and this time I want you to give me the correct question word. Uh, question number three is mm, broke the window. Who or whom? Well think about the answer. Can you say he broke the window or him broke the window? Him broke the window doesn't sound right. He broke the window is correct. So no M, no whom. So who? Broke the window is correct. In question number four, mm, do you want to see? Okay, the answer would be, I want to see. And then would you say he or him? I want to see he or I want to see him. I want to see him is correct. So there's an M in the answer. So we're going to put an M in the question word. Whom do you want to see is the correct question. If you got these right, then you can um, put the correct question word, who or whom, in any situation without a problem. All right, so let's now take a quick look at some relative clauses. Relative clauses simply means that two or more sentences have been combined together. Okay, And to combine them together, we use who and whom. Take a look at this first sentence. Richard is visiting his parents mm, live in Indiana. And here we would put who or whom. Uh, well, first of all, let's split this big sentence into the two smaller sentences or clauses. The first is Richard is visiting his parents. And the second is his parents live in Indiana. And we want to focus on the second sentence. So instead of his parents, can you say they or them? Can you say they live in Indiana or them live in Indiana? Them live in Indiana is wrong. They live in Indiana is correct. So no M, no who. Simple. So Richard is visiting his parents who live in Indiana. Just remember that this is not a question. This who just refers to his parents. Okay, in the second sentence, her friend mm, is a guitarist, taught her how to play the instrument. What are the two sentences here? The first sentence, her friend is a guitarist. And the second sentence, her friend taught her to play the instrument. Here we're interested in the first sentence. So in this gap, can you say he is a guitarist or him is a guitarist? He is a guitarist is correct. So once again, who? Her friend, who is a guitarist, taught her to play the instrument. This next one is a little tricky. Daphne, mm, you met last week, is my fiancé. Can you split this into the two smaller clauses? Well, the first clause actually does not start with Daphne. The first clause starts here. You met Daphne last week. And the second clause is Daphne is my fiancé. Fiancé means I'm going to marry uh, Daphne. Not really, it's just for the purpose of this sentence, of course. Uh, and here we're interested in the first clause. You met Daphne. Daphne is hidden over here last week. Here, can you say you met she last week or you met her last week? You met her last week is correct. And if you remember, her is like him and them. 
So we can have an M in the answer. That means we can have an M in the question word. So Daphne, whom you met last week, is my fiance. And in the last example, the man mm, Cody works for is a billionaire. Can you now split this into the two smaller clauses? The first clause starts here. Cody works for a man. The second clause is the man is a billionaire. Uh, again, we're interested in this clause, the first clause. So Cody works for a man. Can you say Cody works for he or Cody works for him? Cody works for him is correct. So because we have an M, we need a whom. The man whom Cody works for is a billionaire. Now let me remind you once again, if you are not sure whether to use who or whom, just use who and you will be fine. Of course, if you use whom correctly, then your language will sound more formal and more grammatically correct. And that's important, especially in writing. All right, now I'm going to give you a test to see if you can use who and whom correctly. Okay, on the screen, there are six sentences with gaps in them. And your job is to fill in the gap in each sentence with who or whom. Take a moment and pause this video now if you need. Think about your answers and then I will give you the answers. All right, let's discuss the answers. In number one, we can answer this question with he, she, or they. We can say he is going to win the election or she is going to win the election. So the correct question word is who. In number two, we have relative clauses. And we are interested in the clause in the middle. Now, if this clause was a separate sentence, we can fill in the gap with they. We can say they were both high school teachers. They means my parents. So the correct relative pronoun, again, is who. My parents, who were both high school teachers, wanted me to become a college professor. In number three, there's a two at the beginning of the sentence, so that should give you a clue. Uh, now think about the answer to this question. The answer might be, you should speak to him or you should speak to them about applying for a loan. There's an M in the answer, so we put an M in the question word. To whom should I speak about applying for a loan? In number four, again, we have relative clauses and we are interested in the clause at the end of the sentence. If this clause was a separate sentence, we can say she won two Nobel Prizes. We cannot say her won two Nobel Prizes. Okay, so we have a subject pronoun uh, in the place of the blank, so we put who. Marie Curie was a Polish scientist who won two Nobel Prizes. Number five, I'm trying to get in touch with some of my childhood friends, and then you have with, okay? So again, as soon as you have the preposition, you know that it should be whom. But also, think about the clause at the end. The clause at the end is, I have lost contact with them, okay? So because we have them, when we change it into a relative clause, we write it as whom. All right, and finally, number six, uh, this is actually a question, but it's not in the form of a question, okay? And the answer to this question might be, I saw him stealing from the cash register or uh, her stealing from the cash register, okay? So because we can have an M in the answer, whom is the correct relative pronoun or question word, tell me whom you saw stealing from the cash register. Okay, how many of those did you get right? If you got all of them right, fantastic job. If you didn't, just keep practicing and I'm sure that you will be using who and whom correctly in no time. Before you go, remember to subscribe to this channel. If you have any questions at all, again, let me know in the comment section. I will talk to you there. All right, I'll see you in another lesson soon.